Welcome Climate Viewers. My name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org, and weathermodificationhistory.com. Today we're going to get right to the most important topic of the day, weather warfare, who's behind it and how it happened in the past because those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it. Um, that's my slogan over at weathermodificationhistory.com. And uh, I hope that you guys will pay attention to this video. It's going to be a really epic video. Um, this is a uh, this is something that's pretty pa you know it's pretty important. Pretty pretty a lot of people are pretty passionate about this sort of thing. Before I do that, I just want to point out that everything that I do is free, open source, and advertisement free. I hope that you will support me on Patreon with a monthly donation. Um, if you cannot, you can always hit me up on PayPal, um, buy me a coffee, I could use that. Um, but we're going to do some weather modification history today at weathermodificationhistory.com. And we're going to break down everybody's favorite fun guy, Henry Kissinger, what he has to do with the CIA and weather warfare in the past and what's going on today and how the CIA is likely involved in that as well. So some of you may have heard of Operation Popeye. What you may not know about Operation Popeye or weather warfare over Vietnam is that it was also called Operation Motor Pool and Operation Intermediary Compatriot. Um, it was renamed several times because um, a hero, Jack Anderson, reporter of the year of the century, Jack Anderson, um, disclosed what was going on when he found a note on uh, Lyndon Johnson's uh, freaking uh, desk. Speaking of Lyndon Johnson, I didn't even have this pulled up, but now that uh, it comes to mind, John F. Kennedy, he... Uh, he you know, said we want international cooperation on weather control. But Lyndon Johnson said some really freaky stuff like control of space means control of the world. From space, the masters of infinity would have the power to control Earth's climate, Earth's weather to cause uh, drought and flood to change the tides and raise the levels of the sea. To divert the Gulf Stream and change the temperate climates to frigid. Now, Lyndon Johnson obviously had a pink and purple passion for uh, for weather modification. He also said, when speaking to a group of college students at a commencement speech, it lays the predicate and the foundation for the development of a weather satellite that will permit man to determine the world's cloud layer like chemtrails and ultimately to control the weather and he who controls the weather will control the world now i embedded this from texasarchive.org because you know they um copyright flagged down all the youtube versions of lyndon johnson's speech um and then i just embedded it but you know i guess they didn't like all the hits they were getting so you'll have to actually come over to texasarchive.org until I update this video link back to Harold Saves downloaded version. Screw you guys, I've tried to play nice and embed your video, but if you're going to block it on weather modification history, we'll make another copy and put it up there. But I just wanted to bring that up because it was Lyndon Johnson that had a note on his desk and uh, reporter Jack Anderson found this note that read, Laos operations continue at present plus Popeye to reduce the trafficability along the infiltration routes and authorization requested to implement operational phase of weather modification process previously successful, tested, and evaluated in some areas. Now this is from U.S. Senate Subcommittee on Oceans and International Environment, 26 July 1972. Now I've got these over on, I bookmarked them and backed them up over on my script. You can actually see the top secret hearings right here. Hearings of the Subcommittee on Oceans and International Environment. Um, I have January 25th and March 20th. But here's the scary part, people. There were three hearings, January 25th, March 20th, and as listed right here in this one, 
July 26, 1972. That is still classified to this day. I have not been able to get a copy of that hearing. Um, and that tells you something. That tells you that whatever was disclosed in that hearing is still in use today. Um, you know, that's their procedures and they don't want everybody knowing how they did it and what was disclosed in that hearing. So that's kind of scary that in 1972, to this day, we still don't know. I've got another couple other quotes in here. I'm not going to read this whole thing to you. But whether warfare happened in Vietnam, they were using these JATO racks of silver iodide flares mounted on C-130s. What does this have to do with Henry Kissinger and the CIA? Well, guess what? Henry Kissinger and the CIA didn't even tell the Secretary of Defense, Melvin Laird, that they were doing it. They kept it a secret. At the hearings, that was disclosed when Melvin Laird said, I don't even want to admish, wish to admit, sir, that such operations occurred. And the reason why is because he didn't know. Um, Henry Kissinger and the CIA kept it a secret. So you got Lyndon Johnson talking about making controlling the world's cloud layer like chemtrails, like we're seeing. You got the Henry Kissinger technocrat globalist piece of shit um, you know, keeping it a secret from the Secretary of Defense, and you got the CIA involved. The CIA was running the operation. Um, so much so that even the guys on the bases in, in um, Vietnam didn't know. This is the China Lake cold cloud modification bombs that they were dropping. This was invented at the United States Naval Air Weapons uh, Division at China Lake, California. To this day, China Lake at the U.S. Navy is still developing weather weapons. I have FOIAs to prove it. They're on weather modification history. Just scroll down. Um, that's Jack Anderson, a uh, reporter of the century. He's the one who found the note and made all this happen. He gave that note to Senator Claiborne Pell, who was like, well, that's interesting. And he's the one who got the three hearings to happen. And that led to whether war outcry, Congress, congressmen query, American rainmaking pro projects, weather as a weapon of war, cloud seeding over Vietnam, U.S. turns rain into war weapon, CIA rainmaking over Laos has only indifferent results. That's right. It was the CIA. The CIA declined to comment on the reports. Big surprise. Acts of God and Congress. You gotta love the titles of some of these. D shout out to Dominic Rama, my homeboy. He is the Robin to my Batman. Um, and he is the man. If you guys don't know Dominic Marama, follow him on Facebook. Follow us on Facebook, Weather Modification History. He um, took each of these newspaper articles and recreated them into these memes you're seeing right now. And he's an artist like myself of the highest caliber. Senator to seek NATO ban on weather wars. List goes on and on. Weather modification used for warfare. Rainmaking used as a weapon in Southeast Asia. U.S. urges ban on weather manipulative warfare. Ooh, we're going to give you that in just a second. U.S. Soviets proposed ban on weather war. And the list goes on. We've even got a couple videos in here. Bob and the idea was to produce or exaggerate the monsoon rains that are traditional in that region. Yep. Except they weren't using those F4 Phantoms they showed right there. Um, but anyway, let's get out of that one. So this is Operation Popeye. It happened. A lot of people know about it. Most people don't know the full story. Um, I could do the rest of the story for an hour just on this one topic, but we got a lot to cover. So let's move on to the next one. This is the one nobody knows about. CIA Project Nile Blue, rain embargo on Cuban sugar crops, also happened 1969 to 1970. Now this one's interesting, but the seeding near Cuba was to cause less rain, not more. It was supposed to squeeze rain out of the clouds before they reached the island. You might say we tried to embargo rain clouds. So the CIA was trying to kill the sugar crops in Cuba to upset Fidel Castro. And that's how this happened. And here are some articles on that. CIA or the weathermen. Did the CIA order weather modification to ruin the Cuban sugar crop in 1969 and 1970? Or didn't it? Um, they were trying to milk 
the rain clouds. This is economic warfare. This is crop warfare. This is everything that everybody says is going on today. Whoa. How credible are my sources, by the way? More credible than anybody's sources on the internet. You're looking at the world's expert on this topic, uh, Jimmy Grant. Thank you for the comment, though. Um, all of these are well referenced. These are real. You can actually order these. This is San Francisco Examiner, June 27, 1976. Another CIA plot, Cuba crops. And that's where that quote came from. But the seeding near Cuba was to cause less rains right there. Um, so these are real things backed up by real information. I interviewed Dr. Jim Fleming at the Weather Modification Conference this January, and he confirmed that the, the, peop, the, the top brass on the Air Force bases in Vietnam didn't even know uh, what the CIA was up to when they were flying those flights. So if the, if the Secretary of Defense didn't know, if the base operators didn't know, then secret government programs to modify weather have happened in the past and they were busted. Um, so it's only a matter of time before that happens again. This led to the National Weather Modification Policy Act of 1976 after the bald heads and old people at Congress found out that we were doing weather warfare. Um, they were like, holy crap, we need to um, you know, know when people are screwing with the weather. So they passed a law saying that if you modify the weather in America, that you have to um, you know, basically, uh, this isn't even it. This is not the Weather Modification Reporting Act. This is the Policy Act. So the Policy Act basically said, um, let's go back to the list. My gosh, I missed it. I thought I brought it up. Reporting Act of 72 is right here. So this is actually what I was just talking about. The Weather Modification Reporting Act of 1972, which is Public Law 92205. There's all the information on that. And it requires that you um, tell NOAA if you're gonna modify the um, weather. So weather modification activities to be reported to commerce, Proposed weather modification reporting regulations published and weather modification activities now must be reported to NOAA. And here are the forms that you fill out to do that. In my previous video, you can see that I went through all of those reports from 2004 to 2012. They are all mapped out on Climate Viewer 3D. And the follow-up report that shows when you modified it, what you used, where you did it, the type, airborne or ground, silver iodide, carbon dioxide, CO2, or dry ice, urea, that's fertilizer, or PP, um, sodium chloride, salt, or other. So this is an actual NOAA um, form. It's NOAA form 17-4 and 4A. Um, and that's what you fill out to modify the weather in America. So they passed a law saying you got to tell us when you're modifying the weather after they found out we did weather warfare in Vietnam. And then they came up with the Policy Act of 1976, which was said, basically, it's time for a full disclosure. We need to know everything going on in America, who's funding it, and all of that. That happened October 13, 1976, and that was followed up by... The Weather Modification Pro Programs, Problems, Policy, and Potential, May 1978. This is the actual report. Um, now, you've probably seen this on a whole lot of chemtrail websites where they're like, government document proves chemtrails are real. This is really nothing about chemtrails in this article. Uh, it's like 780-something pages long. I read it. Um, and in it, it goes through who's paying for the weather, every single project in America, that's what the Policy Act of 1976 required. And this also led to the Environmental Modification Convention or the, Pro, um, the Convention for the Prohibition of Hostile Environmental Modification Techniques. Wow, that's a long title, glad they shortened it. But the Environmental Modification Convention Weather Warfare Ban um, happened between 1977 and 1980. Um, and you can see right there, Convention on the Prohibition of Military or Any Other Hostile Use of Environmental Modification Techniques, adopted by the UN General Assembly December 10th, 1976, took effect in 78. And I've been working on this in my thing because despite the fact that they banned weather warfare because of what Kissinger and the CIA were doing back in the 70s, 
Um, there's really no way to this day to catch somebody in the act. There's no way to hold them to account. Um, wondering this ties into contrails. Yes, I just showed you. Lyndon Johnson said we'll be able to control the cloud layer worldwide. And that's exactly what we're talking about here. Um, that's part of what we're talking about here. Um, increasing rainfall, decreasing rainfall, increasing cloud cover is achieved by the U.S. Air Force's own admission, 1997, um, using carbon black dust. I can show you the FOIA. Hell, why not? It's a question. I like questions. Let's do it. So we're going to go to right front of the front page. I'm going to type in FOIA, and there is the U.S. Navy. And right after that is the U.S. Air Force. And you see U.S. Air Force weather modification using carbon black. This is a FOIA, Freedom of Information Act request. There it is, weather modification using carbon black, Phillips Laboratory, Geophysics Directorate. And they want to do it to muddy dirt roads, flood fields. Sound like uh, Nile Blue and Popeye all over again? Yes, it does. They even come up with, here's their schedule for where they're going to do it. Numerical modeling, 1996, engineering designs of test engine modification, jet engine modification, 1997. Um, and then ground-based field trials completed in 99, airborne test and evaluation of prototype completed in 2001. Engineering design of an airborne carbon black delivery system completed by 2003 and operational capability by 2004. Why is this important? Because in the Owning the Weather 2025 papers, they said they wanted to use carbon black dust uh, technologies to be developed by the DOD 2005. And what do you know? That lines up perfectly with this FOIA. Um, and like I said, the Navy's added also. FOIA re reveals that weather modification program still active at China Lake, and it's under the non lethal category kind of weird i guess rain can possibly be not lethal um but anyway that's under the joint non-lethal weapons director at jnlwd and once again they talk about using carbon black and and the like there's the foia there's the bomb i mentioned earlier yada 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 so that's all a real thing if you want to actually see uh the proof in the pudding i'll just go ahead and scroll past this real fast we'll go down here to the bottom I'm going to go all the way to the bottom. I'm going to keep going to the bottom. And right here on every single page of weather of climateviewer.com under the popular section right here is a article entitled US military discusses the future of weather warfare despite in mod ban. There's the link for you uh Jim uh Jimmy Grant. There you go. You can dig into that. And you asked what this has to do with chemtrails. I'm going to show you. This is from the Weather Modification Test Technology Symposium. This was right after the Owning the Weather in 2025 papers. And what do you know? What do they say? I'm going to scroll past all this and go down here to the carbon black section, which is right here. Cloud seeding continued. This is slide two of the cloud seeding part. Weather modification using carbon black to increase cirrus cloud cover. That is chemtrails. That is contrails. That is cirrus clouds matter. Increase cirrus cloud cover to deny visual satellite or high altitude reconnaissance, decrease light level for nighttime operations. There's two reasons that they give why the military wants to create clouds using carbon black dust. Something you're not going to hear on any other website. Everybody talks about all these pumps and pipes and all these things. Um, how a plane can physically carry the chemtrails. They don't have to carry the chemtrails. That is the biggest bullshit on the internet. Um, when you burn jet fuel, if you burn jet fuel with the right type of fuel, you produce massive amounts of carbon black dust. That carbon black dust is loaded with metal nanoparticles and wrapped in sulfuric acid. That is how you do stratospheric aerosol injection and create cirrus clouds. Carbon black dust sticks to water, and then the sun heats that carbon black dust. It goes up into the stratosphere. As it's traveling upward, metal frees itself from the carbon black dust. Cirrus clouds are made of metal. 75% 75, 75 of the cloud condensation nuclei or cloud seeds found in cirrus clouds are metal. 
And as that carbon black dust continues into the stratosphere, it passes through the ozone layer wrapped in sulfuric acid and sulfur dioxide. That is stratospheric aerosol injection or delivering sulfur to the stratosphere, just like David Keith said. So that is just a plain ass fact. It's in military FOIAs. It's in this military presentation. It's in Owning the Weather 2025. I could go on for an hour and a half just about carbon black dust. In fact, my next video, I probably will. So back to the story, where were we? So the Environmental Modification Convention happened. That's the ban on weather warfare, as you can see here. Hearing before the Committee on Foreign Relations, United States Senate, 95th Congress, second session on Convention on the Prohibition of Military or Any Other Hostile Environmental Modification Techniques, October 3rd, 1978. And that is when weather warfare was banned. Um, and this all happened because of Jack Anderson. And Jack Anderson is the man. We don't have reporters like that anymore. Um, this is scientifically impossible. Jimmy Grant, I'm now going to just basically tell you, you don't know your head from a hole in that in somebody's ass. I mean, seriously, you need to read my stuff. You're obviously new here or stupid. So moving along, um, where were we? So the next thing is, this is all still going on today. Surprise, surprise. The CIA weather warfare and climate terrorism. Um... Now, I wrote this in 2015-02-22, so February 22nd, 2015. The CIA was back at it again when they funded a geoengineering study that was also backed by the National Academy of Sciences, and then they did something really freaking weird. They called a geoengineer, Dr. Professor Alan Robach, and he said, this is a geoengineer, Alan Robach, saying... I got a phone call from two men who said they were consultants for the CIA and we'd like to know if some other country was controlling our climate, would we know about it? And Alan replied, I told them after thinking a little bit that we probably would because if you put enough material in the atmosphere to reflect sunlight, we would be able to detect it and see the equipment that was putting it up there. At the same time, I thought they were probably also interested in if we could control somebody else's climate, could they detect it? And that is just the fact. Um... Mr. Grant, if you if you uh, have been in aviation your whole life, I have talked to so many freaking airline industry people who don't know shit about science, don't know shit about weather modification, and I've dealt with trolls way better than you. So I suggest you hit the door and don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. Um, and I and I'll gladly debate you. So if you're so damn smart, um, bring your ass on here. I will debate you live. I've said this to Kim Trails Are Killing Us. I've said this to Mick West from Metabunk. I've said this to Dane Wigington. I've said this to every scientist on the planet. I will debate anybody any day on the subject of Kim Trails, how you make cirrus clouds, weather warfare, and the like. And I will gladly spank you over my knee. So there's your offer, sir. You want to be famous? Come on down. Um, but regardless, back to the story. So, Alan Robach, geoengineer, says if, you know, maybe the CIA was actually trying to figure out if somebody, if they could screw with somebody else's weather, would they be able to detect it? So, the truth of the matter is, you can't. And this was, um, came from the 20th Conference on Planet Inadvertent Weather Modification at the AMS. Albedo variability limits potential detection of engineered increases in reflected sunlight. A fundamental scientific question is whether an engineered increase in reflectivity, albedo, or solar radiation management, either from a short duration field experiment or a prolonged implementation of a solar radiation management scheme, would be detectable with current global climate observing system, or our sensors, or our satellites. And the answer is no. We couldn't tell the difference between God making clouds and man-making clouds. This is a fact. In summary, although very large albedo increases are potentially detectable, interannual albedo variability overwhelms the maximum conceivable increases associated with the leading proposed SRM schemes, meaning we cannot tell the difference between God-made clouds and man-made clouds. 
Um, and there's the actual presentation by Diane Seidel. I uploaded this to my YouTube my name's several Diane years Seidel. ago. You can, you can go look at it right here. It's over on YouTube. Uh, it. Let's see. It's uh, February 16th, 2015, right after it happened. So they know that they can't. And the, and the, the truth of the matter is that, you know, the CIA actually had something called uh, climate change and national security office cia closes its climate change office cia for several years has studied national security implications of climate change um, this work continues to be performed by a dedicated team in a new office so the cia is back at it again um kaku sends its love though i knew you were one of those little kaku bitches all you guys, you guys are a freaking gang stalker. If you guys don't know, chemtrails are killing us. Kaku um, are gang stalkers on Facebook who hijack Facebook pages because A, they don't know shit about science, and B, they're just angry little bitches who like to go out and troll people. And I deal, I've been dealing with trolls like you little bitches my whole life. Um, I'll, you don't know your head from a hole. and It's just anyway. Now I'm really going to ignore you. That's all the attention you get for today. And by the way, go get yourself a scientist or do some studying and bring your ass on, on the freaking live stream. I will show everybody how stupid you are, just like I did with David Litton. Um, anyway, um, Echoplex Media in the house, little bitches. Um, so yeah, the CIA closed its climate change center and now has continued their work at another new office um and you know right here if you don't believe me you guys have probably seen the article cia backs six hundred and thirty thousand dollars scientific study on controlling the global climate and everybody's seen the john brennan talking to the council on foreign relations about geoengineering the cia is knee deep in in geoengineering um once again and those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it that's why I have proposed something called the Environmental Modification Accountability Act of 2018 because there is no transparency and there is no verification. Um, an act to end atmospheric experimentation without notification. Um, this is a way to make NMOD, the Environmental Mod Convention of 1976, have teeth. And it would require an international registry of atmospheric experimentation events where people must tell you in advance that they're going to modify the weather or do atmospheric experimentation. And if they fail to do so, to create a two-part um, uh, sensor network to catch people in the act. Um, and that's, that's really what we need at this point. That's why... You know, I'm working on climateviewer.org. Um, it's a 3D globe, and I've been collecting atmospheric sensors from around the globe, so you can see everything like, you know, the radar for today and every satellite on the planet, um, so that we can really dig in there and start seeing this stuff for ourselves. And what we need is way more sensors than we have today. Um, we don't have the technology to catch people in the act which basically means that NMOD is useless and the CIA and Russia and China will be able to continue to do their dirty work. So if you come over here, you can check out my article, 10 Technologies to Own the Weather Today. These are the, the tools that they have at their disposal to do weather warfare on a global basis without anybody ever knowing. And you can download my PowerPoint presentation right here. It's free of charge. Um, right there, download it, email it to your congressman. I do have a congressman currently working on this. It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. I'm going to be talking to the ETC group about this as well. But we need to put a stop to this. And the only way we're going to be able to do that is to start by demanding some transparency and verification. Trust but verify. Tell us you're going to modify the sky because there's no way we're going to put a stop to all the weather modification uh, going on today. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. But the very least, we can you know, go and demand transparency on a worldwide basis and then make a sensor network, one that's the government's and one that's powered by us. And I hope to build a climate viewer in my backyard and then connect it to my map. And then hopefully other people will be able to build those as well or buy one 
either way, we'll be able to put up our own sensor network and catch people in the act because weather warfare is a real thing. History does repeat itself and those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it. So I hope that you guys will support the NMOD um, Environmental Modification Accountability Act. Um, check out my videos from the, the weather modification conference that just happened. I interviewed Dr. Jim Fleming. Um, and he said that what we're doing, what I'm doing with this NMOD AA is very important because space weather modification, um, all of this stuff that's going on today is huge. And, you know, if we don't get some kind of, uh, you know, accountability in all this, we're going to be doomed to fail. We're going to have more weather warfare. There will be dead people. Dr. Jim Fleming said, I think there's a real important role you can play in this. I think there is a role to keep this accountability there. Um, even Dr. David Key said, you know, I think the public notice thing makes sense because I think transparency is very important for building trust. I think 48 hours is much too short a period. I agree with him, but I, I know that what happened with Obama and trying to regulate the coal industry, if we make the, the notification window too long, it'll get thrown out in the Supreme Court. I don't want that to happen. Um, but regardless, obviously... One challenge is to define what constitutes an experiment. I did that at the top of the page. Most sensor networks already have public data access. Happy to lobby for more public access. David Keefe. And Ken, even Ken Caldera, much of a prick he is, he says, Further, I'm fr I find the us versus them framing of your email, because I emailed the two of them, David Keefe and Ken Caldera, a bit disconcerting. Aren't scientists also citizens? Wouldn't we all want more transparency in the conduct, conduct of potentially damaging experiments? So even De, um, Ken Caldera admits that you know transparency would be a good thing. You know, we need honesty and accountability from the people who are screwing with the sky. We don't need a repeat of what Henry Kissinger and the CIA got away with in the past because it, the point is this. If the CIA can do it to Russia, can do it to Iran, um, then they can do it to us. There's no way to catch anybody. So this is a serious national security concern. That is why the CIA was over there asking Alan Robach, could we detect if somebody was screwing with our weather? Because the truth of the matter is we can't. So I hope that this has been an informative video. I hope that you guys will support the Environmental Modification Accountability Act. I hope that you guys will spread this video around and let people know about this because the truth of the matter is this. It happened in the past. The Henry Kissinger and the CIA ran an operation using only three to five planes over Vietnam and nobody knew. They did the Project Nile Blue. They killed the, the sugar crops in Cuba and nobody knew. Um, and even though there is a weather warfare ban, even though geoengineering was banned in 2012 at the Convention for Biological Diversity, what we've learned about bans is they don't work. Upper atmospheric nuclear explosions were banned in 1958 with the Limited Test Ban Treaty. You can see all of these references at the bottom of the page right here. Go to the legal references section right here. And you can see about this NMOD squad geoengineering accountability. Um, Sunshine Project stuff on this and uh, addressing environmental modification in a post-Cold War conflict um, by Susan Pimiento. She's from the Sunshine Project. The uh, Institute of Strategic Studies Islamabad in Pakistan recently referenced weather modification history in its paper, Weather Modification 2025, Time to Start the Countdown. So people are understanding, even in Pakistan, that this is a serious issue. And if you don't believe me, you need to go to the legal reference section at the bottom of the end mod page and read it yourself because right there is weathermodificationhistory.com getting referenced by the Institute of Strategic Studies, Islamabad and others so they take it seriously i don't give a damn if jimmy grant or the kaku or the trolls or any of these guys believe a word of it because i'm making this world change right now with what i'm doing and you can too and all you've got to do is get educated 
So you can do that by reviewing this video, going to weathermodificationhistory.com, coming to climateviewer.com, and supporting the Environmental Modification Accountability Act. Because, like I said, bans don't work. You have to actually catch people in the act. Um, that's why they created the International Monitoring System. It is over at the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty Organization. And it's basically, you know, a series of infrasound monitors, seismographs, and all that to catch people when they set off nukes. Even though nukes were banned, uh, Rocket Man is going to fire them off. And that's why they built a sensor network to catch people doing it. Weather warfare was banned. There is no sensor network to catch people doing it. So that's why they made all these infrasound recorders. That's why they did it. Now it's, it's weather warfare's turn. We need a sensor network to catch people in the act. We need to get some honesty and transparency from the people who are modifying the sky. Otherwise, the past will repeat itself. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. I hope that you guys will come over to weathermodificationhistory.com and uh, support what we're doing. Please support me on Patreon. Everything you just saw is free of charge. There is no advertising. This is open source. You have been able, you're, you're free to you know share this, download it, copy it. Um, but please reference the original Creative Commons attribution non-commercial 4.0 which means you're free to do whatever you want to with it as long as you link back to the original source and uh you know that's why i do what i do and that's why climateviewer.com has got such a hell of a reputation because this is a fear porn free zone and these are the facts the facts have been presented to you in a much shorter video than i normally do and i hope that you all will remember to attack ideas not people if this video resonates with you, leave me a comment because I love hearing from y'all. First time here? Be sure to subscribe and click the bell. The bell doesn't always work, so come to climateviewer.com and sign up for our newsletter. Remember, it would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.